This program brought to you by Brewski's Bar and Grill, located in Utica, Minnesota. Your one-stop shop for delicious burgers, fries, pizzas, and more. Well, welcome everybody to the Sports Wrap with George and Ringer. Uh, what is this, show number 12 or 13? It's been, I don't know, we, we, we you don't, know, we, this we, is my favorite day of the year. <laughs> this is 4th of July, you know, uh, uh, Halloween, Christmas, all rolled into one. Uh, it's just, this is the Army-Navy game day. And I've been watching this since I think the first time that I watched it was um, uh, 1960 or thereabouts. And Joe Bellino was a Heisman Trophy winner for Navy. And he was the latest thing. A couple years later, there was Roger Staubach. But when we were kids, Army and Navy were was a real top top game. Still did, I, did, did I hear right this morning on game day, they took an Army tank and ran it over a Navy helmet and gave it to Roger Sabak? They did do that, yes. What? <laughs> yes, they did. Oh. And Roger didn't, and, and didn't just lay it before him, clunked it before him. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, they, they did do that. I tell you, there was a certain amount of intensity and we can get into some of that in a little bit, but, but, uh, but there is rivalry going on and it, it, it's a two incredible group of young men. It's, it's, it's a really amazing game. Yeah, I think for for most football fans, it's it's one of those games that is always um, highlighted because it's 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 separated now from the rest of them. There's really no other uh, Division One A games going on. There's no yeah. uh, FBS games really going on. The FCS are playing. You can probably see my phone down here. Got the North Dakota State game on. Uh, so they got those games, but it, it, everybody else is kind of off, and so they've kind of separated it, yeah, it uh, from right. everything else, and, it, and they took a special game and made it even more dynamic, I guess. Well, I, I, to me, it's a celebration of, uh, of, a, of a football season, both high school, college, pros, they go on for a while, but, but uh, uh, this is kind of like, this is where it ends. Now it's time for the coaches, the players to reevaluate. Re it's time for those seniors that have been busting their butt for years to get where they're at. Where, where are they going to take it from here? There's just an awful lot of things to come to head this time, and this is a great way to celebrate that. Well, I would guess that if we uh, went to Vegas and we looked at the betting line, mm -hmm. how many points is uh, is your Army team getting today from the from the odds makers? Well, I, I, I didn't look. I would I, I would guess it's probably it's. Ten? If they're giving them more than 10, then uh, I think that they might be surprised. Okay. Um, I think it can be close. There are people that are calling for the upset. Uh, Army has kind of rebuilt. Uh, when I take a look at, at the probable starting lineup, uh, they returned five from last year and only four from defense. And wow. so there was some rebuilding, but at the end of the year, if you're healthy, you've had a whole year to build. Right. And these, these kids can improve. So uh, I, I'm not so sure that Army is not capable, and they've lost a lot of close games this year. So, you know, it's been disappointing, but they're going to be ready. I, I remember when we started taping this show uh, three, four months ago, and we... Uh, we were talking about it, and uh, the, the Michigan game I go back to, and they bring Michigan to overtime at the big house, and, and we were all going, oh, they, could, they, they lost to Michigan. They could run the table. They could be 11-1. They could be talking about playing in the national uh, tournament. And now they're sitting uh, here uh, in this situation where uh, they still have their biggest game of the year to play, uh, even though it could be could have been bigger. Uh, so the, the proverbial throw, the... Throw the records out the window. It probably means more in this game than probably most other games. You, if you saw how upbeat Jeff Monkton was today, he is just positive. He says, "Here, he says, it's been, it's an honor to coach these guys. This is the future of our military. These people are, you know, are, do very very good things." He says, "This is an honor, and they're ready." And the intensity of this rivalry can't be understated. And I, you know, I, I will I will talk a little bit later about, you know, how mascots periodically get get misplaced, <laughs> and uh, uh, and and some of the other shenanigans. Did you know that one time, a general and an admiral 
This was, I, I think, in, in, in 1893, got in a fight in the stands, and the general punched the admiral in the nose, and the, no, and the, and the admiral challenged him to a duel. Ooh. And they did not play that game for four years. Wow. Uh, so from, from 1894 uh, to, to 98, yeah. so anyway, but they didn't play that, but a general popped, you know, a, an admiral in the nose, and it caused all kinds of havoc. And, and, and there have been other things where, you know, a, a midshipman or a cadet will get into trouble pulling some shenanigans, and he'll have to go face to face with the general. And, of course, the general will give him a distinguished award, slap him on the back and say, thanks a lot, in the finest spirit of the service, sure. and, 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 and off they go. So the shenanigans are carried from top to bottom on this, and most of these upper uh, officers, they all went to West Point, sure. and they all went to Annapolis, so, um, you know. They're right in there on top of it themselves. They are. Sounds like what happened at the President's Cup. Uh, did, you, did you hear about that, the golf? The, uh, they were riding back yesterday, and the... Uh, Crowd was giving Patrick Reed a little whatever, and the caddy jumped off the cart. Pow! Him. Went over there and let him have it a little bit. So he's he he's he got himself suspended for he says pushing. Some people say punched, um, and maybe some uh, vulgarities were were exchanged. So no love lost in the golf and the Presidents Cup. Uh, things getting a little whatever. The uh, the Australian fans pretty subdued day one and day two. I watched, I stayed up late last night, day three, Friday night, Saturday, Australia, Friday night, uh, American time. And they started going after the Americans with all kind of, anything that an American had ever done wrong. That was brought up and there was a lot of uh, pointing and whatever. So uh, it's going to be interesting tonight when we see what happens uh, on Sunday time. So in, what uh, time does that start on TV? That, it will start at 6 o'clock, no, 5 o'clock, excuse me, on, okay. the, uh, on the Golf Channel. Okay. And uh, that's when all the coverage will start. That's the last day, and uh, the, the Americans, well, well, they were down pr pretty ugly, and it looked like last night I was ready to go to bed. I was going to turn the TV off and say, the Americans are going to win four points. It's going to be tied at 9 when I get up in the morning. And they're down 10-8, and they had to pull that out of the fire. So um, it was. It got a little scary. Well, it got know, very interesting. Tim, I really had no idea how popular this competition is until a congressman who was at the hearing the other day is all of a sudden accused of not paying attention to what was going on in the <laughs> hearing, and he was watching the President's Cup. Uh -huh. You know, and so it's just like, hmm, it must be popular. <laughs> well, the Ryder Cup is coming, you know, it was just in Minnesota uh -huh. here uh, a couple of years back, and now it's going to be in Wisconsin this coming fall. I was I was all ready to take take a day off from school and head to Kohler, Wisconsin. And I, I, I didn't get I didn't get to buy tickets. I got I got my name drawn, but it was too late. All the tickets were gone by the time I got my chance. So, uh, yeah, but of course, I'm a sports nut, so I, I would I would go do those kinds of things. My Wife and other people's don't understand those kinds of things. No, they don't. And I've got so, one like that too. So you want to talk about other stuff first, and we then come talk, back to yeah, Army and Navy? Yeah, let's talk about other stuff. We got, what, what, we, we what, got other stuff. What do you want to talk about first? You want to talk um, football? First basketball? off, I have to say, last night <clears throat> I watched James Madison. Yeah. Uh, play in, you know, and you and I, and you and I, and and they have a very fine football team. I don't know as they can beat NDSU, but I can oh, see gonna, that is yeah. the championship game. That, that, there's a, there's a reason why they're. Why they're seated number one and number two. number two? There's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, you and I looked uh, uh, to, to all, all to, to Evan Omdahl and whoever else out there. They looked pedestrian last night. You and I did. Yes. I mean, they they could not move the ball against uh, James Madison, and their defense did stop uh, James Madison three times in the red zone. But man, uh, James Madison's got a lot of athletes. They, they just can do. run. Holy smoke! They're fast. They are fat. I just, I was just shocked. Uh, I, so yes, I was watching that on one TV and had the golf on the other. And then I, I, I and the, of course, Gopher volleyball was playing last they night. They certainly were. So I had them on the phone. So I, would, my wife walked through at one point with the two TVs and the phone on, and yeah, I was would, watching. I was she wouldn't between. even look at me. She no, was, we were sitting between the two, and Sue was watching, and she's screaming in the kitchen. So I have to turn up the volume on the football game, <laughs> and so she says. It's the fifth game. It only goes to 15. Get out of here. <laughs> it was it was uh, very interesting to go for volleyball last night. Against uh, Florida, yeah. Against Florida. And the first set was just incredible volleyball. And then the second second set, it looked like Florida 
hadn't played volleyball before, and the Gophers looked like they were the champions of the world, and then the third set it absolutely flip-flopped, and the fourth set it flip-flopped back the other way, and the Gophers looked like the better team in the fifth set. They just had, they've got so many horses, and they, they, get, Louis, they get Louisville today uh, at 7 o'clock our time on ESPNU. Uh, I know that it'll all be said and done by the time you people get to watch this, but uh, like I said, there'll be President's Cup, there'll be a... Uh, Volleyball on tonight, and there probably isn't going to be a whole. It's lot sports of, insane out there it, right it is, now. It, it's uh, the, the, I, I got to give I got to give people credit, whoever makes all this work out in the end, that they that they, they keep us sports fans always going on and on. I mean, there always seems to be something to to look forward. So last weekend it was okay. We got the championship football games, and we're going to talk about that. And then you get on Sunday, you get the selection show, and then they get all the rest of the bull bids out, and then the President's Cup is this week, and of course, blah blah blah, and it just it just keeps going on and on, and and uh, there's just there's just no downtime. So there's uh, there there's a couple of other teams that are alive and kicking, and I'm talking about St. John's. Uh, uh, you know, this Jackson Erdman, yeah. he went 27. For 38, one interception, 407 yards, and five touchdowns. And did you hear how the game ended? That, uh, Wheaton. What I happened? We, yeah, they they yeah. missed the extra point, or it was blocked, or. Well, after after they scored the touchdown to yeah. get within one, they yes. got they spiked the ball, so they got a 15 yard penalty. Are you kidding me? So, that, that so they so me. they so they kicked the extra point, and the kid missed, but there was a penalty on. Uh, Wheaton, they had 12 guys on the field. How do you have 12 guys on the field for an extra point? I don't know. And then St. John's roughed the kicker. Oh, my. So they had to do it all over again. So they re-kicked it, and he missed again. <laughs> so St. John's wins 34-33. So they play Whitewater today. And yeah. uh, Whitewater came in uh, not – well, Whitewater's been very good and just hasn't – they aren't their normal selves this year. and They're not as dominant as maybe they've been – uh, and of course, Mountain Union in Division Three already out, which is kind of scary. And they're playing that in Whitewater. They're playing that in Whitewater, and I believe that starts at two o'clock. So when this I, North I Dakota so. State game gets done, then the St. John's game is going on the phone. So uh, we we, we got to keep up to date on what's going on. So uh, not that I always say this, but go Johnnies because I'd like to see the no, Johnnies. No, I mean I was going to say I, I, I practiced saying that all morning long, and it was hey Johnnies, go get them, man. <laughs> So, <laughs> we'd li li but like to see them. And, of course, Mankato already underway, I believe, and I haven't had that on because I've had North Dakota State on. But um, uh, Mankato State, the number three overall seed, they're on the road. Uh, and like I said, I think we said this last week, let's see if Mankato can get a, a Minnesota team into the Division II National Championship, which would be played next week as no, well. No, I mean, they dominated Texas A&M Commerce 42-21, and right now they're playing as good a football as they played all year, and it's uh, – had, they had a nice uh, write-up. I don't know, the Minneapolis Star Tribune must have decided that they needed to sell more papers in Mankato because <laughs> they, they've been going down and they've been breaking up the uh, Mankato State uh, hockey team, rightfully so, number one in the nation, been kicking the snot out of everybody. Uh, they've been down there breaking up the arena. They've been down there breaking this up. And then they went down there with this football team, and they, they played two quarterbacks. And they played two quarterbacks because that's the way they want to do it because, well, I guess I look at it this way. If I got two quarterbacks who are happy and we're getting some playing time, you don't go play for somebody else over there. So I keep two guys happy here. And if one gets injured, I still got two guys that are, know the system, know what's going on. I don't have it. So the uh, Mankato State uh, head coach, he's, he's got something going on there. He, he's got a couple of guys that have bought into the fact that, I don't need to be the number one guy. I can be the 1A, 1AA, whatever it is, yeah. guy. And uh, it seems to be working for Mankato. But obviously, you just can't have two quarterbacks. You must have some other athletes. And they've uh, they've brought some Division One, upper-level Division One kids down that are playing at Mankato. And, and that's the same with uh, with all levels. And they, they get those kids uh, to come play. And, uh, you know, good for them, yeah. Watching watching that, uh, this kid from North Dakota State. It looks like he was going it, through a seizure. It, it almost looked like he could have been going through a seizure here, but uh, looks like they've either got no. him to calm down or, or whatever as North Dakota State leads 9-3, to three, uh, 13 and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter as we're uh, taping this. And no, so, but it's like you bring up using two quarterbacks. I have seen that happen and, and, and do it effectively. Jim Malosky did it with uh, with uh, 
uh, a, a guy named Christensen and a guy named Scott Janander, and these were two really fine qu quarterbacks. One could pass and the other one could run. <laughs> we would have the other team come up. They'd be changing them. Here comes the run. Here comes the pass. And and most often they were right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, still you had know, to stop it, right? No, but yeah, yeah. Scotty was six three and two hundred twenty five pounds. He's a big, big strong kid in nineteen sixty eight. And so, uh, well, and I'll tell you the way it sounded. These two guys, it, there's not one run and one pass. They both can do, do it all, same. and uh, so they're very, very, yeah. very similar creatures uh, in that respect. So. Uh, you want to talk Heisman Trophy, or is it a done deal? No, I, 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 I'll tell you what. Last weekend, I saw two of the four yeah. play, and, yeah. and another one, uh, J.R. Dobbins, J.K. Dobbins. J.K., I J.K. Dobbins. He was right in the mix, and you're watching all these things, but I really... <laughs> I've really not seen anybody play football the way I've seen Chase Young play football. Yeah. And Joe Burrows, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, his whole, his whole route that he's taken is really pretty fantastic, and I'm glad to see that they've been able to go down there. He's got a great coach and, and a great team, and, and uh, I'm sure that they're going to do real well. It's yeah. amazing that they'll be playing Ohio State somewhere along the line, I think. Seems, but, a, seems but, reasonable. But if I were if I were in charge of that for the first time, I'd have given that trophy to Chase Young. Yeah, he is really a phenomenal athlete. When I took a look at at the game film when I came home, because you can't always see when you're when you're there, uh, he was double teamed ninety percent of the time. Sure. And uh, although you know he's, I mean he's he's lean and he doesn't look big out there but he's 6'5", 260 pounds and he can really run and he can really run yeah so so, so they, they did say at some point that in the first half towards the end of the first half of that big 10 championship game that he really hadn't been a factor in the game he because, hadn't been but i mean you you do something to slow a guy like that down so uh but what was the difference you were there I watched it on TV when it was 21-7 at half Wisconsin. I'm like, wow, this is this is this is going to happen. They're going to upset them, and and this is really going to put the 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 playoffs into a quandary because now they're going to have a one loss Ohio State team. LSU is going to be there. Clemson's going to be there. Are they going to take the number one team and losing to Wisconsin? Are they going to drop them down out of the playoffs? I'm like, holy, well then they took care of all that. I mean they. They 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 absolutely routed them in the in the second half. There was, you you could see why they're the number one or number two ranked team in the nation. I was talking to a to a man who played for Wisconsin, and he was a Big Ten official, and he had all kinds of tags around his neck. And from Wisconsin, Wisconsin scored the first touchdown. We bumped fists as he was walking by. When it was 21 to seven, he was going the other way. I says. You got to feel good about this game," he says. "You know, Wisconsin has a way of blowing the second <laughs> half." He says they were up 31 to 10 to Penn State a few years ago, and Penn State beat them. And I forgot about that, but that is true. And you know, and I, 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 I swear he did not want to talk to me about this. No, congrats. He didn't want anything to do with this football game till the fourth quarter. So I went back to my seat and talked to my buddy about how we were going to get tickets to go to Pasadena. Because I, I thought Wisconsin was in control. But that defense shut them down, and I mean down. And, and you know, what, 28 unanswered points? It, uh, there was, uh, it was quite amazing. Yeah, they, uh, like I said, they're, they're, they're ranked where, uh, where they are, Ohio State, that is, yeah. uh, for a reason. Yeah. So uh, Wisconsin goes to the, uh, the Rose Bowl and the... Uh, the Gophers get to go to Tampa to the uh, Citrus Bowl, and they get they get Auburn. Yes, and I'll tell and, you and, what. And they were talking they were talking Auburn or Alabama, and I'm like, how? I, I mean, I I, get, I I I understand it. I get it, folks. Florida wants the Orange Bowl would want to see Florida play in Florida. I mean, they're, they're trying yeah. to sell tickets. I mean, I get it. But the Orange Bowl really wanted Florida over Auburn. Or Alabama, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm. Well, did, did they think Alabama wasn't going to travel? Auburn wasn't going to travel? I, 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 I don't know. I do I, know this: that they have Auburn, who had one of the toughest schedules of the season, and Alabama, who had one of the weakest. 
And that's just that's just numerical right. fact. Yeah. And so you take a look at this, and, and also first game of the year, very first game of the year, I watched Auburn play, and they had this kid named Bo Nix. Mm -hmm. And he was just a freshman. He was one year out of high school, and I was watching him. I was watching him take who was a Florida, Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. Yeah, and 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 and, and beat him up. And yeah. so uh, I just thought, oh, this this Auburn team, and they they've got that solid tradition. They got they got Charles Barkley pulling for him. I mean, they've, they've, they've they've got the whole deal. Um, so uh, this is going to be this is going to be a good game for the Gophers. This is this is a premier game. It's on January 1st. First time in what, 58 years? I was young 58 years ago. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they got to play in 2014 on, on the 1st of January. Uh, but boy, they, uh, they really got their hands full. They do. I mean, they really have their hands full. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I've, I've tried to speak the truth of my mind about it all year. Uh, I, I really believe if the Gophers, wow, well, if the Gophers are within Ten points at the end of the game, maybe more. Uh, I'll feel like they showed themselves well. Um, I, I, I guess I, I guess I figured that they would. When we were talking a couple weeks ago, that maybe they had a chance to go to the playoffs or whatever. Yeah, maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. Uh, well, I think Auburn, Auburn, Auburn is 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 a heck of a ball team, and 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 a lot of Gopher fans or a lot of naysayers or whatever, if the Gophers lose this game, they're going to say, oh, they lost three of their they last were not, four. They were never were any good. Blah, blah, blah. They were yeah. just pretenders and it was a weak schedule. It was all this other stuff. Well, okay, you can sit there and say that, but when you play some of the top teams in the nation, you're going to lose a certain number of games. What If, if we're going to complain about a 10-3 and three season that we're no good, where the, where is Alabama at? Having lost twice in one season, I mean, my goodness, they, they're probably suicidal, ready to jump into the Gulf of Mexico because, uh, <laughs> you know, things are bad. Uh, all I can say is that the Gophers just need to show up and not get blown out of the water. That's To me, that would be a great sign. Yes, would I love them to win? Uh, yeah, I'll be cheering for them, all the rest of the stuff. But if they can stay within two touchdowns, I'll be very, very happy. One analyst said, I want to see Minnesota's large offensive line go against Auburn's large defensive line. They've got and a tackle that is, and I can't think of his name right now, but yeah. Yeah, Minnesota's got one too. Um, but, you know, it's one of the things where I think the question for Auburn is, can they cover our wide receivers? Mm. Because we still have one of the highest rated quarterbacks in the country. He can still throw the long bomb. He can still pick um, uh, periodically uh, backs out of the backfield, which I think is the most remarkable play in football. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and he can go deep with two or three or four people. If they can control the outside game, if they can control the edge, then, then Auburn's got a good chance of winning this football game. If they don't, it's going to be a dogfight. And, and PJ, he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, he likes dogfights. Oh, I, I don't. I don't think they'll 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 run away from it. And you know the thing about it is the two uh, all Big Ten uh, wide receivers. Um, the you know the thing I can't understand, George. We we, we, we coached football. Yep. We, we we we've seen teams that ran the slant against us. Yes. We felt like we had something to take that away. How, how do how did the Gophers get away with? The RPO slant, I guess, probably because that's what they yeah. call it now. It's an RPO. It's not a play action pass. It's whatever. It's a run pass option. I, I'm telling you, I, I, it's, it stuns me that the Gophers. I, I mean, Tyler half, Johnson's going to make a career off. I, I was going to say he half of over half of his catches probably yeah. came on the slant, uh, going over the middle, and he, uh, he he was able to do that. And it just uh, it, it seems amazing to me. You would think that. There's going to be some coach that's going to be able to take that away, but then, like you said, they can go deep and they do can go things deep. that they and, need and, to do. And they also have two or three running backs. I mean, you know, hey, for my money, you could big, put big Seth back there and let him bang away. But uh, <laughs> yes, uh, and and I think you'll probably see some of that. But there's there is no reason for the Gophers to take complete backseat on this game. No, I, and I agree, and, and some of the, the, the super gopher fans would probably be saying, look what they did to Georgia Tech last year. Nobody thought that they could get ready, shut down the yeah. triple option and, yeah. and all the rest of that stuff, and they went into the uh, bowl game last year and did exactly that, took care of business. So, uh, you know, these teams get three weeks plus to prepare for these games, yeah. 
a lot of stuff gets put in, a lot of extra stuff. You get a chance to throw some things at some other teams, and it's how to, how, how well prepared are you? So does Auburn come in a little like, well, we're Auburn, we're from the SEC, we're just playing the little Golden Gophers, and we'll just take our chances and we'll do what we normally do? And is it where the Gophers, like you said, throw caution to the wind and say, we're, we're, we're going oh, okay. to pull out all the trick plays and everything else and make things happen. Uh, the key is for the Gophers, and everybody will tell you this, it's the three weeks extra practice. But there are a lot of people asking questions about our coach. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting next to this guy from Michigan. This guy had played in four Rose Bowls. He was a lineman and twice as big as me and not near as good looking. But he says, what do you think of P.J. Fleck? And I thought, no, this could mean several things. I says, I says, I do know when they come out of the tunnel waving their paddles, those boys believe they can win. And I says, I also think that he might have some kind of deal for recruitment. I think he has a situation that can uh, that can really help recruiting recruitment, and uh, I think you're going to see that. But over and all. He believes he can beat every team he plays, and that's what I told him. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. The, the thing that I see is, and I think every college, every university is going through this. You see a lot of people leaving. They're going into the transfer, transfer portal because there was another one. They, 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 well, they're not happy. Well, when you got a hundred guys, yeah, or plus on the roster, be yeah. with walk-ons and scholarship players and everything else, uh, there's going to be a certain number of people who you, who are going to be unhappy, who are going to want to leave, and so a lot of people say, well, they can't stand PJ Flack, right? It's that's the reason why they got to be leaving because they can't stand Flex, uh. whatever. Well, I don't think you came to Minnesota and knew what PJ Flick was if you didn't want to buy into all that and, and play through some of that stuff. So, um, th th can it be a little bit whatever, overbearing, too much, uh, too much charm, too much BS, too much whatever you want to put on it? Um, he is what he is. He's never going to change. That's no. That's his style, and so um, everybody has their thing. I, I, I. I, I did, did you see Nick Saban last week? They interviewed him before the, or two weeks ago, they interviewed him before the game. Here's a man, what, Saban's, what, 65, 64, 66, somewhere in there? He looks like he's having no fun whatsoever. None. The TV interviews are a pain in the butt. The whatever is a yeah. pain in the butt. Um, it's almost, and I hate to say it this way, it's almost like he needs to move on again. Well, and maybe that's because, the case. Because, you know, he was at LSU, and then he went to the He's NFL. and then taking he a lot of it. water out of that it, well. It, you know, and so now all of a sudden, do you need to go someplace else to rejuvenate yourself, to do whatever? And I, I think you were kind of leading into Fleck might be leaving, might be whatever uh, people or whatever. You know, somebody I heard, maybe it was you, somebody said, oh, they rehired USC, rehired Clay Helton for one more year because uh, they're waiting for P.J. Flex for that buyout. They can't, you know, they can't steal him now. And... Uh, I, you, you look at the Urban Myers. You look at some of these great coaches. Eight, nine, ten years. They they over. You know they their welcome kind of runs out. They everything starts coming off the rails or whatever it is. And I, I guess I I, I, I don't I, know. I, but I hear what you're saying. But you know, in the case of Myers, you know you've got a. a, a Ryan, Dave, um, Dave Ryan. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Dan, yeah. You know, the, yeah, the yeah. coach. He's young. He's energetic. He's brought a whole new perspective. He's he's a little bit in awe of where he's at. Sure. Nick sure. Saban's not in awe of that. No. No. It's just like he's worked through that a long time ago, and, yeah. and you see these young coaches, and you just think, in the same way with the Wisconsin coaches, clearly there is a generational change. We're a long ways from Barry Alvarez, and, and you, you, you take a look at what's going on over there. Alvarez's grandson's playing for Wisconsin. <laughs> it, it, it just, and thank, thank goodness it does, but these young people and these young coaches, hey, they're very intense and they work hard. And they work, yeah, they work extremely hard. There's the, no doubt about it. So, who are you picking for the Heisman? We, we, we started in there and then we went away. No, we, I think Joe Burrow is going, is going yeah. to get it. I, um, I, like I say, once I watched uh, uh, Chase Young play football, I just thought that, 
<laughs> that was really something special. And, and it would be something special if, if the voters decided that Jalen Hurts was uh, worthy yes. uh, from Oklahoma. Yes. Wouldn't it be interesting to see three quarterbacks he, he's, from he's, Oklahoma three years in a row win the Heisman Trophy? He's played in three national championship games. <laughs> and, you know, and it's just like you just, you know, that's not that easy to do. It's not that easy to do. You know, are, are there people out there who are saying, could Oklahoma have three straight Heisman Trophy winners? Three different, and they all transferred in. That would be the that yeah. they did not start at yeah. Oklahoma. No, that would be uh, something that would be talked about for uh, years to come. I don't think it happens. This transfer portal is really quite a deal. Well, and it's it's going to be even it's it's yeah. going to get more and more because kids are going to really find out that look, it's, it's it, I can do it. Why not? Why not? Why, why not go do it and and uh, and take advantage and and play for? Well, they say so. I'm happy. Some of them would be so I can play for a national championship. Uh, and so I think some of it's going to turn into the more of the haves and the have-nots. Uh, it's going to be very hard to break through uh, and do anything other than that. But a lot of people say, well, it's already been that way. Look at uh, Clemson's been able to break in to that room to get in there and always yeah. be in the, in the mix. But, you know, it's always Alabama, Auburn, LSU, Ohio State, and now Clemson. And Georgia jumps in there, you know, it's, it, whatever, and it's it, it it just comes down to those teams every year. And um, I, w I I hope someday that it changes where it's more open because even the you know the NCAA basketball tournament, you, we we talk about the teams that are always at the top, the Dukes, the Michigan. Those those aren't the teams that are always at the end. No, no, and, they're and, not. And, and I've seen some upsets this year. <laughs> and, and, and and that's why March Madness is is why it's called March Madness and. And uh, so, having said all that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. What else you got? What else do you want to talk about? Uh, anything else? Oh yeah, we'll go back right back or, to the Army Navy game as soon as you want. But you yeah. might have some high school stuff uh, you want we, to bring we up. We talk a little bit. Uh, nice day for the Broncos on Thursday. Uh, the Bronco boys swimming and diving team. A game that uh, meet that you can watch on, 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 uh, That's on cool. uh, Midco Channel Seven KCC TV. Can go back. I still think you still can go on online. And watch that. Uh, it only took about an hour, and uh, we, it was uh, it was enjoyable. I I enjoy the swim meets, and uh, the boys get their first win in a couple of years. So uh, good for them. A dual win against Chisholm. The boys' hockey team got a nice win over uh, pr pr the Proctor Rails, four to two on uh, Thursday night. And the Bronco boys' basketball team had to hang on. I I was I was getting updates from afar as I was sitting in a meeting, not watching sports, in a meeting. And uh, geez, the Broncos were up by like 64-53, like with, I don't know, four minutes left. And then I get an update, it's 69-61 Ooh. with 102 left. Ooh. And then it's, no, 68-61. And then it's 68-66 with 32 seconds to go. And I'm like, oh gosh, we're going to lose this thing. And they found a way to hang on, 69-66 over Evelyn. And uh, and then the uh, Bronco girls on Thursday night, uh, the basketball team went to Virginia, and the Virginia girls basketball team isn't probably in the Masabi East or the Duluth Marshall or the Proctor range, but Virginia's pretty good. And uh, they, they gave the uh, Broncos a pretty good handy too, and then the Virginia boys did it to our Bronco boys on Friday night as well. And I don't know if you heard about this kid named Jaden Bernard. Do you remember him? When we, two years ago, when the Bronco football team got yeah, seven interceptions, yeah. you remember that wide receiver yeah, that yeah, jumped out of the we building? We were asking about him. Yeah, he, well, he, 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 he's a pretty good basketball player. He is. He's going to go play at Jamestown. Ah. He scored 59 ah. against Wasabi East the other night. And, uh, and he, uh, he had 31 12 minutes into the game. Ooh. He had 31 points 12 minutes into the game. And they sat him down and gave him a little rest, and he had 39 at halftime. And only scored 20 in the second. Oh, didn't he? Only scored 20 did, in the he second. He chewed up our court pretty good up here. Last year he chewed up the court. He was in the 30s somewhere last year because yeah. uh, it was him and uh, Armando. Armando went, were went back head to head and went to overtime. It was one of the best high school yeah. games I've seen in years. And so uh, he, he uh, I did not see how many he ended up with last night against the, uh, the Broncos, but... Uh, 59 points in any league. I don't care what. No, it, no that's rack, a lot of buckets. Whatever it is, 59 is, is a lot, and he, uh, yeah. he he can jump out of the building and do some things. So, uh, uh, so we, let me get this right now. You we you broadcast football, hockey, and volleyball. Volleyball, basketball, basketball, and now swimming. And, and, and now diving. swimming. 
you've covered the whole spectrum. Yeah, we done, we, we've done ourselves pretty well. The, I wish we had found a way to get that cross country, the Ohio Pike on next year. We will get a, we'll, we will we'll, get that we're on. We're going to figure out a way. Yeah. And uh, if, if Tim can find somebody to do his job at the uh, track and field meet. <laughs> The the, the the cheering has begun, folks. The cheering has begun. The, the uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna get a track meet on next spring. That uh, that would that, be, that, that, that would really that, that would really be cool. That that, that that is something that I'm 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 looking to do and uh, and see what happens uh, as far as that. So uh, I, that's that's my promise to you people out there, the viewers that on KCC TV and Mid Midco Channel Seven, uh, we're, we're we're gonna get a track meet on next spring uh, somehow, some way. So we're, right. we're going to try to run the game. Oh, no, I, I, I watched it. I watched the swim meet and I thought, he did it. I mean, when we <laughs> talked about this last fall, it was really almost a pipe dream. And, and you know, it's just, and I remember you bringing it up. We'll do a swim meet. And I thought, can you bring all that equipment into that moist thing? And I talked yeah. to, to Darcy and she set it up and she says, boy, was it ever hot. And it's warm I, and, I, in there. I, and I suppose it was. But I also knew I've gone to swim meets. And I have never gone to a swim mate without seeing you there. And I thought, you know, this this guy's a little bit bent, but uh, you know, but you always like that swim mate. Yeah, I uh, for for a lot of the first few years, I was so busy with uh, refereeing and other things that yeah. I, I didn't get there for the first few years. But uh, you know, one one of the sports that you, everybody enjoys watching during the Summer Olympics is is the swimming right sure I mean, it is oh it is it's I, I, it is one of those one of those sports that you that seems to work for tv and uh, i was thinking after the meet it would have been fun if i had one of those cameras that slid back and forth yeah we get it on the wire end to end, <laughs> end, to end i could have just just let her roll back and forth but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, we, I, I enjoyed it. I hope the people who had a chance to watch it enjoyed it, and, uh, and everything will go on. on the Army Navy game? I'm I'm gonna say that it's gonna go. Jeez, are, are we ready to? We we should probably. Well, okay, we have, I yeah. just, just, yeah. Let, let's well, let's ask the crowd. Who wants Navy? We do. <laughs> That'll about to answer that right yeah, there. We know. I, I, I've seen a lot of beat army shirts over there. Yeah, and, uh, the nice shirts. I like those. I, I, I suspect that if we'd brought them over here, they'd have put the head on like uh, Lee Corso. By the way, who's who? Who did he pick? He put on that goat. He did, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just like, you know, I always. Do you serve? Do you serve mint jelly with mutton or goat? How does that work? I I don't I don't know. Anyway. You know, the intensity of this game, and I just want to go through a couple of things. They didn't start stealing each other's mascots till 1953. Okay. And so in 1953, a group of, of uh, cadets came down and um, they took the goat and they put like whatever it is, oil. Or, uh, oh, like um, um, ether. Yeah put the goat to asleep, hauled his butt up to West Point, and the goat woke up when they, and when they were in a convertible, the goat woke up when they were pumping gas, and they, these <laughs> goats have these big long horns, you know, and poked the horn through the convertible and proceeded to rip the top off, and this was all witnessed by a number of people. So later when the cops came, did you see any goats around here? Well, as a matter of fact, we did. And so the Army boys, they, they, they put the goat away, tucked it away, took really good care of it. They did take some pictures threatening to, car, to, to shave an A in his butt. Uh, there were Angora goats. And they asked the Admiral down at down in Annapolis, did somebody kidnap your goat? And he says, no, we, we, we uh, loaned the goat to the Army so he could help guide their pathetic cadet corps. <laughs> but they still didn't get the boat, the goat back, so they called the President of the United States, who happened to be Dwight David Eisenhower, who graduated from the, from, from, uh, the military academy and was also the only president to play in the Army-Navy game. Okay, I did and not so, know that. See, so, history you know, lessons abound, folks. That's, that's right. And he told the superintendent down there that maybe this was a good idea and they should uh, and, and they should go back and, and give their goat back. Now this this settled into a kind of a back and forth in 1961 
Navy went up to um, uh, up to West Point, and they kidnapped four four of their mules. Four mules. Not too shabby. Yes. And so, but what they were doing there, they cut lines and tied up some staff members and did a bunch of stuff that were felonious. Oh. And so they threatened assault and all these crimes on these midshipmen and 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 the the, the superintendent of, of of naval academy says don't worry i'll take care of it and and these sailors were promptly given the order of the mule congratulated and slapped on the back <laughs> but the, they didn't get away with it and i understand that there you know there was a police chase and what they don't say in the records is assisting in that police chase were army helicopters so they <laughs> They were not. They were not messing with any of this. And they've done other things. They dressed up. Their, their, uh, they had a small mule, and they dressed it up with horns and fuzz, and rode this thing out on the football field. And people thought, "My God, they're riding the goat. That poor goat." And and it, and it was all. They, but they had a small burrow. So so they've they've pulled that. The number one deal was though, and I tell us because there's Marines and sailors here. Um, <laughs> As the as the heads turn, the cadets I'm decided surprised the bodies came with. I the thought cadets, maybe the, the, cadets, <laughs> the cadets decided to go steal the goat. The goat's name is Bill, by the way. They're all Bill, and I think they're Bill Thirty Third now. So they're going and they're going to get they're going to steal the goats. They they plan to take three of them. The Navy had an idea that somebody was up to something, so they surrounded them with Marine Corps guards. And so the guys brought their girlfriends down, and the guards went to the gate and said, you know, we were, you know, um, our boyfriends left us. We don't have any way to get back. We've been stood up. Can you help that? And Marines being good Marines said, yeah. And so their back, as their back was turned, the boyfriends cut through the fence, went into uh, the veterinary shop, and stole three of their goats and made off with them and that was called the golden fleece thing and there were there were there were a couple of other there were there were a couple of there were a lot of other ones but they like stealing each other's must I, I would guess that cannot happen any longer because just a couple of summers ago i went to west point and i was approaching the gate to get to campus and i was just meandering down the street with my daughter and my nephew and i got to the about oh here to the wall away over there george and a guy came out with all kinds of paraphernalia on his body and he said you need to turn around and i said i know and he's and i was kind of standing there looking he goes you need to turn around now and i'm like Okay, he's uh, got the draw on me, and then this is at West Point. Yeah. Uh, you you were not getting on there without a pass, without no. the right uh, whatever. So uh, I would guess that that kind of stuff can't happen anymore. Uh, I would guess the, the goats and the uh, and the uh, mules are kept uh, in a place where you aren't getting onto the campus anymore. That that this isn't going to happen. Well, no, but there were a couple of guys that were involved in 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 the hor in the mule th theft. And they wound up being um, quite advanced Navy SEALs. Uh -huh. And so they were just kind of practicing practicing their deal as near as I could figure out. And so, you know, that was, uh, hey, I'll tell you what, you're talking about highly trained, yeah. highly capable, key word is, college guys. Yeah. And so they are willing to go through anything. Also, their superiors went to the same school yeah. that they did. Sure. And they pulled pretty much the same stuff sure. and so you know there was you know they one time even had to make an agreement that we wouldn't steal each other's critters anymore and the black guys went down and stole the goat and and, and the officer said oh we didn't know that was still in effect that was the superintendent's <laughs> oh we we didn't know we were still living by this rule there you go. but there's other things number one these this game has never been played um, in the west part of the country, except twice, they played it at Sh Soldiers Field in 1926. And that was the opening of, of, of Soldiers Field. Okay. They had 100,000 people at this game wow. at Soldiers Field. And then 1983, the Pasadena Committee brought almost 10,000 people out to the Rose Bowl. And 1983, 
they they they, they played they played in the Rose Bowl, and so uh, other than that, they have played it in New Jersey, Maryland, New York, four states. They've not yeah. Pennsylvania, so that's uh, that's the only time that they've done that. I've got some other things. Uh, uh, one of the mules, Ranger Three, his real name was George. I like that. <laughs> Oh, then, you know, there are some other traditions here. For instance, they have, if they haven't already have it, they have a march on, where all cadets from both academies march on the field and go take their place. This is not, this is not recommended activity. This is required activity, and, and they will do this. Uh, let me see here. What else? At the end, oh, let me see. March of the Cadets, they have a prisoner exchange. There are a certain amount of students from each academy going to the other's academy, and they are marched out in the field, given their release, so they can so go watch the football game with their respective, with their respective school. Uh, and then, at the end of the game, all the, both teams go to, the loser goes to the winning side's student body, with uh, the winner on their side, sings the alma mater, then the winner goes to the loser's side and sings their alma mater, and the winner always sings second. And that's why they say, you know, and I've heard this, this is truly the fight to sing second. <laughs> and and, and they, they, they take that part of it very, very seriously as well. So, uh, let me see. I told you about the admirals. Oh yeah, you know there was. They they highlighted a kid named uh, Paul Carruthers. He's a linebacker, and he didn't get his first. He's a senior. He didn't get his first start until um, uh, until the Air Force game earlier this year, and all of a sudden he's come on like gangbusters. But he he was he was named one of the captains without really ever being a, a, a starter and getting a lot of play time. But his family. He had three older brothers that went to the, went to the Naval Academy. A father who was who was incredible, and, and a police officer who was killed in the line of duty, and, and and a little sister that's joining the academy next next year. I mean, this is the kind of family familial situations. And here's this kid out there. He says, you know, I thought about quitting. There's a lot of players better than me, you know, but. Stick it out. Big, big hit on the North Coast State game. You don't, I'm not, not nothing bad oh, going on with me physically. Uh, but it's fourth down and seven for Illinois State. They're down nine three with one minute with the, on their own 25 yard line. And this is a big smack right there by the North Coast State DB. It is. So. Did, did he get? Uh, uh, no, it's, no, no, it's fourth and seven. No flag for that okay. one. So. Other than that. Okay, so it's time to it's time to make your prediction because it's 150 on the big clock and we need to get set up. So we can watch some of the festivities, I, right? I, I really have no choice. <laughs> I, I'm wearing a hat from the 9th Infantry Division from some guys I knew in World War II. I've got my shirt from, from the, the, the 30, 36th Infantry Division, the Red Bulls. And so uh, I guess I'm kind of attached, although I do, I do have uh, sea time. But you, you, you want to make a prediction on the score? I'm, I'm going to say that the score is going to be 21-17. 21-17. I just hope it's a great game, folks. And uh, I don't know if anybody's been looking at the hat that I've been wearing, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it out cup. there. Uh, we didn't talk about this uh, a few weeks ago. Things after Thanksgiving weekend, when the, uh, the Thanksgiving week, when uh, when the uh, Blue Bombers made the uh, got the win in the Grey Cup uh, very convincingly. So I just got my hat the other day, and so. Ukrainian army versus Ukrainian. There's nothing the matter with good Ukrainian dishes. I love every one of them. So, Army's going to win according to George. We got lots of Navy fans over here that are shaking their head. There ain't no way in heck that that's going to happen. That's why they play the game every year. That's why they play the game every year. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thank you. This program brought to you by Brewski's Bar and Grill, located in Utica, Minnesota. Your one-stop shop for delicious burgers, fries, pizzas, and more.